Even when he's had off, off moments, off games, he has bounced back. No matter how many times he's asked certain questions along the way, he has maintained the same demeanor at all times. You see him getting better in the throwing game. You see him getting better in running the football. You see him getting better in feeling the pressure. Well, everybody, welcome into live post game show. I'm Mark Farzetta, Derek, uh, Devin, Katie, with you. We are presented by Ocean Casino Resort. Book your summer of 2022 weekend right now at Ocean Casino Resort. Book it now and go for the live shows. Go for the win. It's going to be a spectacular summer, almost as spectacular as the Eagles handling their own business. Now, look, whatever happens today, all right, the Eagles control their own destiny still. But here's what you're rooting for: Panthers, 49ers. Both of them can get wins or one or the other. And Packers beat the Vikings. Eagles are in the playoffs. That's how they clinch today. The bottom line is they handled their business today with a 20-16 to 16 win over Washington. Yet again, it wasn't comfortable early, but the Eagles took care of business when it came to the second half of football. Gunner, your instant takeaways from this victory over Washington. Well, coming into this game, I said on a number of platforms um, – that this Washington team had nothing to lose. And when you look at this team, um, man, you talk about a dark cloud hovering over this team for much of this season. You go back to the first time they played the Eagles 12 days ago, uh, 23 players uh, on COVID list, you know, top two quarterbacks missing as well. Since then, uh, you know, DeShazer Everett involved in a car accident that uh, – ended with his girlfriend dying. And then just this past Tuesday, Montez Sweat, uh, his brother, gets uh, shot and killed in Virginia. Um, they get embarrassed on national TV by the Dallas Cowboys. And, you know, when I talked to a number of my contacts in D.C. this week, you know, uh, one of the things I asked them was, I said, you think these guys will quit on Ron Rivera? And the, the, the response in unison was, these guys have – so much respect for Rivera, they're going to play their hearts up, which they did in this game. I was a little surprised with the Eagles' defense giving up as much real estate in the first half as they were giving up. Oof. The the offense did its job; they moved the ball, um, you know, and, and they kept kept it close. Um, but the defense surprised me a little bit. They picked it up in the second half. They finally got some more pressure, and Taylor Heineke uh, got him down several times. Josh Sweat had a great game today. Uh, and, and, of course, uh, Rodney McLeod at the end makes a huge play for this team because I know a lot of people are sweating uh, as they watch Washington <laughs> out, just walk down the field and get in scoring position. I'm not going to say any names or point to anybody in particular. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, one of them yeah. might be on the screen right now. I don't know. One, yeah, <laughs> one of them might. But, you know, um, these are the kind of games the Eagles uh, need to play. Uh, because this is the kind of game that could be in, in in the playoffs. They only ran for 118 yards, you know, um, th but that's okay. You have you have to find different ways um, to win games. I was a little bit surprised, um, you know, Sirianni went for it early on in the game in the fourth and one situation, gave momentum right back to Washington. But, of course, Washington has difficulty scoring points. They have problems scoring 20 points a game in a league where you can accidentally score 20 points and a half in a lot of occasions. Um but the defense made plays when they had to. Um, Jalen Hurts made plays with the, obviously his ankles a lot better. He stepped up and ran in some crucial situation, picked up some nice real estate. The bottom line is getting a W. I don't care how you get it, just get the W. And that's exactly what this team did. And they won a close game. Their backs were against the wall, playing against a team that had nothing to lose. Um, they very easily could have lost this game. You, you never know. We've seen some crazy things happen this year in the NFL. And, of course, you know, Eagles go into somewhat of a prevent defense. Washington's walking down the field. And Taylor Heineke, I'll say this about him. I've watched him six or seven times play this season. There have been a number of games where, you know, when he plays, he looks like, okay, he's ready to turn a corner and become a, a better-than-average quarterback in the National Football League. And then you see him play at other times, like, what are you doing? You know, it's like it's the first time he stepped on the field. And you look at his numbers overall, 20 touchdown passes, 14 interceptions. And you know why? He's a very streaky quarterback, hot and cold at any given moment. Um, and Eagles have rattled him just enough to get the job done in this situation. 
Uh, yeah, that's a, that's a whole mouthful right there, my friend. Uh, uh, Devin, uh, your instant reaction to this Eagles victory. All right. Well, I think I didn't have a chance to do it before we went live. So can we all just take a collective deep breath? Because, oh, my gosh, I knew I had a feeling that this game was going to be more stressful than people were giving it credit for. Because, yes, Washington went through a lot of hardships just in the last week and two, or two but they were embarrassed, like really embarrassed by the Cowboys last week. Uh, and, you know, it's a, it's a pride thing as well. I th also think going through those hardships, you know, they're playing for more than themselves. And you do have to respect that. But, oh, thank goodness for Roddy McLeod is all I'm going to say. Someone just said, uh, give Jonathan Gannon credit. And no, because I want to dive into that more <laughs> later on the show. Because, like, you guys know how I've always been skeptical of Gannon. But, sure. oh, my goodness, especially in the first half. It was infuriating to watch this passive defense. Um, but I will also say I felt like the refs, I hate to be the person that's like, oh, the refs weren't fair to us. I mean, I don't know if Washington's defense had any penalties. If they did, they were minimal where we were getting called left and right, both on offense and defense. Uh, and that was kind of killer there for a while. But uh, really proud Boston Scott stepped up, loved Jalen Hurts again putting the team on his shoulders and really uh, I think he had one of his most precise games throwing wise as well. Um, Dallas Goddard with that huge first down. I mean, I do think everyone eventually stepped up, but the slow starts have got to stop. And I'm still uh, me and Jonathan Gannon have to have a talk because. <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> well, I'm sure he's shaking in his boots uh, right now more so than he usually makes quarterbacks shaking their boots uh, when yeah. it comes to a lack of pressure. But this game, I actually will say this about Jonathan Gannon. Uh, it, this game in particular against Washington, I felt like they did bring pressure. In the first half, they had five rushes a couple of different times, five-man rushes a couple of different times. That uh, Taylor Heineke all of a sudden just figured out how to beat. Like, all of a sudden, he was turning into, like, Ben Roethlisberger in his prime, John Elway in his prime with escapability that we just haven't really seen from him throughout this entire season. And, yes, mm -hmm. Devin, I think you're on point when you talk about the 56-14 to 14 loss that they suffered at the hands of the Cowboys just a week ago. And the fact that they also lost to this Eagles team with their practice squad quarterback, essentially, Gilbert as Grape, their quarterback. Yeah, yeah Gilbert, <laughs> Gilbert Grape, of course. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how can I forget? But uh, I thought the Eagles defense did make adjustments in the second half. And I thought the adjustment was, hey, Josh Sweat, go get it. Because mm -hmm. Josh Sweat was all over uh, Taylor Heineke this afternoon, all over him in the backfield, deflecting passes, getting sacks, wreaking havoc. Uh, Jannard Avery had himself a good game as well, had the bad penalty, negated his own interception, but for the most part came up with some big plays, especially that sack late in the game. Uh, you saw Fletcher Cox get into the backfield, Jannard Avery. The defensive line, I thought, stepped up and did exactly what the defensive line was supposed to do at the start of the season. I thought this was their best game of the year. I thought defensive line play was great aggression was mostly on them. They did rush more than four, sometimes five, on a couple of different occasions. So credit to Jonathan Gannon. I will be willing to give him for at least that. But one guy I think does need a shout-out because I think the guy has had a phenomenal year, and I think his, his position has become more and more important as, as this season, as this league really, has become more of a pass-happy league, and that is Avante Maddox. I think mm -hmm. it is mm -hmm. BS – that he, that he got called for that uh, pass interference call late. Was it pass interference? Yes. But was it pass interference by the referee standard that they already set earlier in the game, especially on a receiver like Dallas Goddard, for instance? Yeah. No, yeah. it was not. So it should have been yet another big play that he made in the late goings of this game to help the Eagles sustain their lead and also hold Washington at bay in that second half. So huge shout out to, yes, that defensive line for just dominating, I thought, uh, as the game went on today. And then also Avante Maddox for what he was able to do late in this game in the Eagles secondary. A huge hat tip to him today, Gunner. Yeah, um, it, it's unfortunate in a lot of ways because we've talked about this before. But when you consider... How many times over the recent years since they they changed what pass interference is, yeah, right. referees have looked at film uh, with the league office. It's gone over. Referees go to training camps and, you know, they, they control scrimmages and basically they tell players what they're, they're looking for. And when it comes to the regular season, it is one of the most inconsistent calls in the NFL. It has won a few teams' games. It has lost a few teams' games as well. And I don't know what they can do to improve it, to make it more consistent, because uh, offensive pass catchers are confused because when they think they get pass interference, they don't. 
And defensive players are confused because they play the game a certain way. They get away with certain things for a lot of the game. And then all of a sudden, out of nowhere, they're called for certain things as well. Um, and, and I don't know how you fix it. You know, you've got all these different camera angles to look at. You study it. You discuss it. You share your information with every team in a league. The referees, when they make mistakes, they go back and review the games that they've, they've just uh, refereed. They look at stuff. They still can't get this right accurately, you know, mm-hmm. and consistently. And I, I think, you know, for the team that it goes for, – for the fan base that it goes for, great. For the fan base it goes against, they're pulling their hair out and screaming. And I don't see it getting any better anytime soon. Mm-hmm. No, I agree. One of the things I always think of is uh, Mike Shanahan when he was on NFL sidelines at this point, at this was at the time it was filmed was like 20 years already. And he goes, I've been on the NFL sidelines for 20 years. I still have no idea what pass interference is. Right, we still right. have no, they even reviewed it for a year and that didn't help at all. It was a reviewable right. play. Uh, but let's look at this offense. No Miles Sanders today, a banged up Jordan Howard uh, didn't really even get touches till later in that first half, but Boston Scott took over in this game with two touchdowns. Jalen Hurts had a couple of scrambles in this game, but really when you talk about the offensive line play, minus a couple penalties from Lane Johnson, uh, both false start penalties, I thought this offense was able to kick it into high gear later in this game as well. First half left a lot to be desired, as we know. Devin, you mentioned it. They have had a lot of trouble getting things going in the early goings of these games, and today was no exception. For whatever reason, in the second half, they were able to start getting the ball going down downhill a little bit more, and Boston Boston Scott was right there to champion that cause. He definitely was. And I love that Boston Scott is it not just becoming has become, you know, the guy who needs to step up and does step up when the Eagles are in need of a, of a rusher because Jordan Howard was not himself, especially earlier in the game. No. Uh, it did seem like things were starting to click a little bit more, but we all know what happened to him last week. So I had a feeling that this was going to be a big game for Boston Scott. Uh, we know he's the giant killer, but I guess now he's the Washington football team killer as well. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Appreciated NFC's, him N- yeah, NFC's dominator. That's what we'll just call yeah. him now. Just NFC's yeah. dominator. Now just go to do it against the Cowboys and sure things up in case they're not able to do that today anyway. But again, here's what you're rooting for today. You're rooting for the Panthers and the 49ers. Either of those teams win. And then obviously the Packers, they take care of business against the Vikings tonight. Hand them another loss. And the Eagles have a playoff berth on their hands. Who would have thought? Now, here's what I got to go to. I I know a lot of people are, and I have been hypercritical. I've been rooting for Jalen Hurts all year, but I've been hypercritical of him because I know the Eagles front office is being hypercritical of him. When you look at what he was able to do today, and when you look at what he's been able to do throughout this entire season, from the get-go to now, you are looking at a first-year starting quarterback in the NFL with only four starts under his belt going into this season, and a rookie head coach, an offensive-minded head coach, lead this team into the playoffs. We have talked a couple of different times over the last few weeks here about this Eagles team being able to put it together and make adjustments as the season has gone on. We've been talking about Jalen Hurts climbing that mountain towards franchise quarterback more so than he has fallen down that mountain away from that too. All right, he's a career backup. I think today was a perfect example of him making throws when he needed to make throws, him scrambling when he needed to scramble, but overall him stepping up when his team needed him most. Whether that was a QB sneak late on a fourth and two to try to make something happen, or that was a perfectly thrown ball on an out route to Devontae Smith. Whatever that was today, I felt like Devontae Smith, I felt like Jalen Hurts, I felt like Nick Sirianni, especially in that second half, were making adjustments to the point where this team was not going to walk off that field with anything short of a victory today. So as we evaluate this season to right now, on the doorstep, Gunner, of this team making the playoffs, when you look at what has impressed you the most, Jalen Hurts, Nick Sirianni, the overall play calling, the the attitude and the, 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 the really diversity of this offensive line, when you talk about the offensive side of the football, what's the most impressive thing to you? I, I, I don't think you can just narrow it down to one thing, but I would start with Jalen Hurts, and we talked about this from game one. How would he handle the pressure? How would he handle all the rumors? What kind of maturation would we see from him during the course of the season? Nick Sirianni had one type of offense he wanted Jalen Hurts to function in. That was not the offense suitable for Jalen Hurts. And all of a sudden, along the way, Nick Sirianni flips the script. It started with the Detroit game. Let's go ground and pound on teams. And then he kept going and kept going. You were hoping it wasn't just a one-game scenario. And because they ran the ball as efficiently as they did, 
it, the onus wasn't solely put on Jalen Hurts' shoulders to throw the ball 35, 40 times a game for this team to win ball games. And Jalen Hurts has handled himself like a seasoned vet in terms of handling the pressure, distractions, questions about all the rumors. Even when he's had off, off moments, off games, he has bounced back. No matter how many times he's asked certain questions along the way, he has maintained the same demeanor at all times. You see him getting better in the throwing game. You see him getting better in running the football. You see him getting better in feeling the pressure and knowing when to step up and either throw, move outside of the pocket and throw on the run. And I've said time and time again, I think he's a better passer on the move than he is as a stationary passer. We saw that today in a third and long situation when he threw across his body, he rolled to the right, Oof. threw to the middle of the field to Greg Ward, picked up a key first down inside the five-yard line. Those are all maturation processes I wanted to see from Jalen Hurts, and I think we've seen them steadily. Everything about his game or quarterback in general doesn't have to be perfect. It will not be perfect. That's not what the position is. It's a position of will you make more plays than not, and Jalen Hurts has had that ability to make more plays than not especially over the last three games. In a bigger picture, the only thing that concerned me a little bit about this game was the last two games, it was the offense that came out stagnant. This time it was the defense that was stuck in the mud and the offense kept him in the ball game. Now you got to find a way to get it together because even if Dallas wins today against Arizona, I got a feeling Dallas is going to need, is going to need to win that game next week because the mindset has to be okay. If the Rams won, and I know the Rams were leading by one point over Baltimore in the final seconds, and Baltimore was driving. I don't know what the outcome of that game was. Tampa Bay was getting thumped uh, by the Jets, but I believe Tampa Bay came back. The Rams so won. The Rams the beat the Ravens. So the Rams won, and what about Tampa Bay? Did Tampa Bay come all the way back? They were down by 14 at one point. They Kevin won 28 to, look at the scoreboard. 28 to 24. Uh, Tampa Bay won. Okay, so you look at Dallas's situation. They have to win this game against Arizona. If they win the game, they're still in a tie with the Rams, still in a tie with Tampa Bay, with the possibility of seeding, moving up and seeding uh, still on the line. So Dallas is going to come in here, we think, full arsenal, ready to go. And that defense is a monster right now. Ever since Demarcus Lawrence came back, ever since Randy Gregory came back, and, of course, Michael Parsons in the middle, cent everything centers around Michael Parsons. Dallas's defense has evolved as a beast. So the Eagles can't afford to play this next game coming up the way they've played these last three games. you know. And hopefully they've learned from this. Um, but they could be in the playoffs by then. But And they may, they may arrest a lot of players. If they figure out they can't move up in seeding, if they get in the playoffs tonight, Eagles may rest a lot of their players while Dallas is playing for seeding. But – you have to be ready to play a much better game overall when you get to that second season if you want to go farther than that first game. You know, I the the thought of the Eagles putting together a full 60 minutes, a full four quarters, both on offense and defense, they'll be a scary team. And I think that they can get there, but I truly don't think that we've seen that yet this season. And someone just said, guys, smile, we won. And I know we won, and I'm super happy, but there are those, you know, Have we not starts. been happy? Have we not been happy? I, 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 I don't know. Well, you we didn't start the show singing this time, so maybe that was <laughs> well, a vibe was the, setter. What? <laughs> yeah, and so, all acquaintance be forgot. Like, what, 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 what other holiday go. song do you have for after New Year's? Like, what do we got after that? <laughs> nothing. We got nothing. I'm Dreams excited. Of Eagles by Dreams of No. I'm very, I'm, I'm very happy that they won. I am. I agree with all everything you said, Deegan. I'm concerned that we're going to have to face teams that aren't Washington football team and aren't the New York Giants like Dallas, even if that game matters. I don't know. And then once we make the playoffs, you have to start strong. You can't come out in the first half and play passively on either side of the ball. So that's my biggest concern. But we always talk about adjustments and we talk about how we're impressed that Nick Sirianni was able to make those adjustments throughout the season. It is impressive the adjustments that they make from the first and second half several games in a row now. I really want to know what, what he says in the locker room because clearly it works, but also clearly it should be said before the game, not at halftime. Well, I'll tell you this real quick. Uh, speaking of locker room speeches or you know speeches within the NovaCare walls, there are a couple of things I watch. If I'm like, Ed Gunner, you've known me for a long time. Am I ever in a bad mood? I'm a happy-go-lucky guy, right? Happy-go-lucky most of the time. Huh? huh? What? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, just 
<laughs> Smile not for a second. But no, like if I'm ever down, like if I ever just need a little motivation, no. you know what no, I watch no, a lot no. of times? You're always a happy go lucky guy. Yeah, yeah. Of course I am, except like usually in this, like it, if, if I'm talking about like Philadelphia sports, usually it's the opposite. But it's like really the only thing that I'm like a pessimist, I guess. But anyway, in, in life in general, I'm a happy go lucky guy. But if I'm ever feeling down, whatever. Uh, Jim Valvano's speech at the ESPYs always like gets me motivated and like brings me out of any rut I might be in. Uh, you know, this is a very wide variety of things. Will Ferrell outtakes make me laugh and make put me in me instantly in a good mood. You know what I'm going to add to this list of motivation and instant uh, mood changes? Jason Kelsey's speech at the Novacare Complex in the bubble to the team prior to the first matchup against Washington. Did you happen to see that on the Eagles on the Eagles uh, website? Did you guys happen to see this? Yeah, yeah. it made me want to run through a brick wall. That oh, man oh my literally goodness. Incre- like, yeah, but that's why when you have Jason Kelsey making speeches like that, they should he should make those speeches right before the games, and I'm sure he does. But that was incredible, and Whew. he's never allowed to retire. <laughs> no, never allowed to retire. Uh, I think our friend uh, Kevin Gandhi of uh, ESPN even put it out there saying, just put him in the Hall of Fame now. Just put mm-hmm. him in the Eagles yeah. Hall of Fame now. I don't care if he's still active with speeches like this, with ways to motivate his team. He's already won a Super Bowl. He's going to help them make it to the playoffs this year. Jason Kelsey needs to be in the Hall of Fame right now. And I do not disagree with that even a little bit. So, yes, as part of the positive vibes, my most positive vibe has been Jalen Hurts this year throughout the entire season. And I'll just say it one more time in this segment. I know that the Eagles and Gunner, from the people you talk to, I'm I'm sure you know this as well. You look at the front office and Jeffrey Lurie, the reports coming out there about Jeffrey Lurie and Howie Roseman being divided when it comes to the future of Jalen Hurts and whether or not he'll be the franchise quarterback going forward. There's reports out there about the Eagles being interested in Aaron Rodgers. Really? Interested in a three-time MVP? You don't say. But When it comes to Jalen Hurts and watching him grow throughout this year, he has done a phenomenal job throughout this year. Can you nitpick at things in this game that were things he still needs to improve upon? Absolutely. For instance, overthrowing Devontae Smith in the back of the end zone on their first possession. That was a throw. He had pressure in his face. You still got to make that throw. He did it. Okay, he wasn't perfect. But still, evaluating his entire year, He has done nothing but impress me as the Eagles quarterback. And he only, for me at this point, still solidifies for me that he should be the starting quarterback of the Philadelphia Eagles next year at the very least. If he could grow from week one to now the way he has into Pro Bowl consideration, into locking up a playoff spot for the Eagles, if he could do that all in one year as a first-year starter, If this was a guy who was a fourth or fifth overall pick, we'd be signing him up already to a 10-year deal. But because he was drafted to be a backup, he's met with a lot of skepticism. And right now, I feel like at least for next year, that skepticism is unfair because, Gunnar, as you pointed out many times on the show already, you can't control where you're drafted. But this guy goes out there and completely balls out for the year. I'm all about him being at least the starting quarterback for next year. I think he has at least locked that up right now. I, I I can't emphasize enough. You know, I know people get excited about the rumor mill. Can he get a Russell Wilson? Can he get an Aaron Rodgers? But see, I'm of the mind. You have three picks. You have three picks that could that could you could build cornerstones with in terms of youth. The NFL is always about trying to get younger and get better. But a lot of times, when teams go into the youth movement. That means they have to take their lumps for a couple of years before they get better as these younger players develop. But in Eagles' case, you can still get younger. You will have enough veteran presence on both sides of the football to where you're not taking significant steps backwards to get better. You can still get three young players. uh, You can sprinkle in, and they're not considered cornerstones. But if they're three of the top 32 players in the National Football League, you hope they get it right on at least two of them, you know, that can step in and play right away. Now, unfortunately, we've seen in recent years, just because you're a first-round draft pick doesn't mean you're going to be an instant star in the National Football League or a starter immediately in the National Football League. And there have been some busts along, along the way, most notably at quarterback, but also at other positions as well. But you hope that you can get at least two or three players you can plug and play right now with this organization. And I do believe that Jalen Hurts has done enough to make this organization feel comfortable 
Well, if we have to come back with Jalen Hurts in 2022, we can add a few more things to the overall repertoire of the offense, which will make him that much better, hopefully, next season. And he will continue to grow and mature into a top-notch NFL quarterback. And, oh, by the way, we've added some, uh, we've added some other pieces as well where we can keep this train moving and we can be considered a legitimate playoff contender again in 2022. I'll absolutely take that, especially if the maturation process continues. When we come back, as we return here on live post-game show on uh, the Jacob Media YouTube channel as well as 6abc.com, we will look a little bit more at that uh, Eagles defense. I know, uh, I know, uh, Devin, you're chomping at the bit to get after that Jonathan Gannon Sorry. character. Yeah. And let's just hope that Jacob <laughs> Media has enough cameras to follow you in the Novacare complex and have your stern talking to with Jonathan Gannon because I am I'm here for that I can't be there for it but I'm here for it I'll tell you that much uh when we were told don't forget uh grab a stateside vodka soda or try the new Surfside iced tea by stateside vodka see the scroll below and use the code Jacob for 15 percent off the very popular stateside vodka soda go to statesidevodka.com that's statesidevodka.com more live post game show when we return <laughs> 